so I will briefly review the work from my presentation yesterday to show you what the output of this can look like and then we're going to go in more detail step by step on how you can do this yourself approach. So we talked about AMA grip syndrome, a very rare malformation syndrome with characteristic facial features as shown here. And the facial features have previously been described as Down syndrome-like. We now know of 13 individuals, eight of these were previously published and five were newly identified, who have this condition, as you can see, a mix of male and females and in age ranging from childhood to adults. And with the exception of this individual here, they were all of Caucasian ancestry. So our question was, does Amy syndrome have a facial phenotype that is recognizable using automated facial analysis? In order to assess that, we uploaded one photograph of each of these individuals into the face to gene software, and we used control cohorts, one control cohort of individuals with Down syndrome, because the facial features in Amy Grip syndrome had previously been described as Down syndrome-like, and a second control of individuals of Caucasian ancestry without a suspected syndrome diagnosis, so more of a true control. And then we ran the research application, and in fact, we did this twice with different control cohorts, but with the same Amy Grip syndrome cohort because we really don't have more facial photographs to work with. So the output of this app gives you composite images, and for the composite image, for the individuals with Amy Grip syndrome, the facial features in the 13 photographs were averaged and then put together into this composite. So that's how these composites are created. This here is the composite of the 20 individuals with Down syndrome in that cohort. And here are the unaffected controls. And this here is the second set of experiments. As you remember, the same face for Amy Grip syndrome because it's the same 13 individuals but possibly subtle differences in the Down syndrome and the unaffected controls because there are 20 different images in those cohorts. And then we also had a binary comparison where two cohorts are compared to each other. So here in green, the Amy Grip syndrome cohort and all other cohorts, so the Down syndrome and the unaffected controls were looked at here. And this binary comparison is visualized as the receiver operator characteristic curve shown here and the area under the curve is shown as well as the p-value. So this is a binary analysis. And then lastly, the system also gives you a multi-class comparison. So looking at the different images from Amy Grip syndrome, Down syndrome, and unaffected controls, the system has a choice to make which in the buckets the picture should go in. So 86% of the time it correctly identified Amy Grip syndrome. These are the true positives. 98% of the time, Down syndrome was correctly identified, and 76% the unaffected controls were accurately identified. And what you look at here is the mean accuracy for the analysis, and you have to always put that in perspective to the random chance for this particular analysis. And based on the cohort size, because they were not exactly the same size, this is not one third, but it's 37.7%. So that's what the output can look like. So, we're going to demonstrate now how you can do this for your own favorite syndrome. When you open up your face to gene account, I suspect most of you are in clinic because that's how we usually start in. So this is where we are in the clinic view. You all know how to add a new case. You click on add a new case. And then for the individuals that you want to put into your research cohort, you have to upload at least one facial photograph. And you also want to identify the case so that you know what you're dealing with. So for convenience sake, I chose individuals with Costello syndrome. So we upload a facial photograph and we want to label the cases in such a way that we are very clear on what cohort this is. If you want, you can add in the age, the sex, the ethnicity, but that is really only if you want to, you don't have to, but one facial photograph and an identifier so that you can find what you're working with. That's necessary. So you continue to add cases until all your research cases are uploaded into your clinic this way. And then 
From your clinic view, we now switch into research, and that's really the only critical piece of information that you need to remember. Everything else kind of flows by itself. So you switch from the clinic view that you're usually in into the research application. So when we click on that, we end up in the research application. I have previously done research for the Amy Grip syndrome cohorts, as I just showed you. So for me, this already comes up. And for convenience sake, I clicked into one of these already existing experiments. But what you probably need to do is you're going to start a new project. Because if you haven't been in here before, you're starting fresh. So I clicked into what I had already established with unaffected controls and the Amy Grip syndrome cohort here. But we now want to add a cohort. So we click on add a cohort. And then when you are back in your clinic page here, what this automatically takes you here, you just mark all the cases that you want to add into your new research cohort. And here, it's really helpful if you label them in an obvious way that you know, yep, these are the cases that need to go into this particular cohort. So you just click them there. And then you end up with a three cohorts. This is the one that we added. These are ones that we previously had. Um, you want to be mindful of that the cohorts are more or less similar in size. If you have a huge imbalance on the cohort size, that by itself introduces a bias. So you don't really want to do that. So at this point, you want to run your experiment and you push the button. You get yourself a cup of coffee. It takes a little bit, literally a few minutes for the system to run the analysis. You get an email and then you know you can click on view results and when you click on that you get the results it's it's one long screen so i can't show it all rolling it's different slides here but it's really on one page so you have the results summary you know when it was done the number of cohorts the number of cases and you have the algorithm version if you want to pay attention to that then you get the summary for the multi-class comparison. So I showed you earlier the different buckets. And what it shows you here is the accuracy. But you probably want to look in more detail further down the page. For the binary comparisons, it gives you the area under the curve here. But as you scroll down, you get more information. So you automatically get the composite photos. So this here is the composite that the system used, the 16 images on individuals with Costello syndrome. Their facial features were abstracted and averaged, and this is the composite of those 16 images. So the system does not go back into everything it ever learned about Costello syndrome. This is really what you put in the research cohort, that's what you see here. And this image you've seen before, and those are the unaffected controls that you've seen before. And then you get more detail on the multi-class comparison. So you see here the unaffected controls were properly identified 92%, the Amy Grip syndrome 97%, and Costello syndrome 98%. Good. One hopes that this is what it would look like. So you get the mean accuracy listed here. And as I said before, you always want to compare this to the random chance because that is the only meaningful comparison you have at this point. And the random chance depends on the cohort size and the number of cohorts. And so for the binary comparisons, you can also look in more detail. So for, you can look at each of these, the unaffected controls in green compared to Amy Grip syndrome. He has Costello syndrome in yellow compared to the unaffected control. So for each of the binary comparisons, you get all the background information, you get the area under the curve with the p-value. If you want to drill down into that level of detail, it's automatically there. So that's it. It's really pretty simple.